Hey guys, it's Tori and I'm here right now with Palais Royale. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. That was perfect. I got it! <laughs> we were talking just before we started. I always clarify how to pronounce the name to make sure I don't mess it up. Perfect. But I haven't yet. I no. haven't yet. No, it's all in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're in Orlando today. Yes. You guys are no strangers to Orlando. Nope. No, it's we're not. We'll be back. Good. It's hot. It feels it's good. disturbingly sweaty here. It's very toasty. Very it's so humid. sticky. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. It's. I feel like I put maple syrup in my jeans. That's it's the first like, time I've heard that. Right. Comparison. It's just like maple syrup in my jeans. I mean, so you know what that's like. You've I know what that's before, like. So oh my god. Every, every morning before I wake <laughs> up, just <laughs> go to Waffle House, take some Aunt Jemima, all down there. Yeah, Enough they information. All something new. So we're gonna start with some finished sentence questions on that note. <laughs> um, just as an icebreaker, as if we needed one. Uh, so the first one here, we actually got from Twitter. It's WB Lauren wants to know, um, if you could listen to one album for the rest of your life, it would be. Just one album. One album. Um, it's an album by The Caretaker. Um, it's like 1920s opera classical music. Ooh. I like that. That's, that's hard to beat, that's hard to beat. Uh, <laughs> Black Parade. Switching it up, you two have very different tastes Yes, here. we do. Very different boys. Black Parade's a good one, though. Uh, Harvest Moon, Neil Young. I knew it was going to be something silly. So <laughs> silly. <laughs> and next one here is also from Twitter, at Good Grave Girl. Um, wants to know your number one inspiration is... That's a question we got a lot, actually. Number one inspiration is Remington. Um, does that have to be a person or can it be a time period? Anything. The 20s. Uh, for me, it's the Renaissance mm -hmm. age and then the 1920s because everyone pushed each other as artists to be better. Um, Tim Burton. He's just always killing it and he inspires me to look more creepy and beautiful at the same time. So thanks, Tim. I can see that inspiration. <laughs> we just call him Tim now. So Tim? <laughs> On a first Timmy. name basis. Hey, Tim. Know hey, you're Tim. watching. Good to see you. Glad you're here. He's, you he's the only <laughs> subscriber to us. We like, the your, only we like your shit. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting there going, yeah, yeah. he's my boy. I don't know what he sounds like, so I'm guessing that's like. Actually, yeah, I think that I don't know either. What does he sound like? Do, do we this ever is, know? I'm actually gonna look. He sounds like Johnny Depp to all of us. You're right. Yeah, no, that's actually, sort of you don't I really envision. know. Yeah. We're gonna find out later. We're gonna find out later. And next one here, the most shocking thing a fan has ever done. Oh. This, uh, you guys have one of the most incredible <laughs> wow. faces I've ever seen. They're, they're yeah. insane. I'll take this super I love weird. Death, but yeah. In Washington D.C., a girl straight up threw up on the front of the stage. <laughs> yeah, that was and like three years ago. She was like taken away and it was cleaned but up. But she was still and trying to watch the show. She came back two songs later and was like, "Oh my god!" Wow. I was like, "Go take care of yourself, girl." She bounces back quick. She uh -huh. bounces back so <laughs> quick. But our fan base is literally because we're all, we're just a giant family. And there's literally no and there's there's no barriers there's no <laughs> barriers or no limits between us and our fans anymore. Like yeah. I thought I had like a hint of privacy. No, no, hell no. Is it, that something you get used to? It at, um, guys? at first I was like, oh, like I would love privacy. But I'm like, I really don't care. Anymore. Yeah. Because they kind of love me no matter how how many stupid things. There's they some do, parents so. that are weirding us out. <laughs> like yeah. the, the kids you can handle, but when the parents are like more into the band than the kids are. Right. The kids are like, yeah, I like Tyler Al. And then the parents are like, you're my favorite band in the whole entire world. And we're like, okay. Cool. We're a big hit with the moms. Yeah, the moms love us. Ooh, yeah. hey, but mom. A lot, of, a lot of strange fan encounters. But yeah. there, like, there was this one incident where there was the like stripper security. stripper in the hotel room that wouldn't leave. She, I wouldn't consider that a fan. Well, she came to uh, the So there's yeah. like, there's like security, like, uh, she was with her son, protecting yeah, like the bus. And like, this fan just starts just. Like running oh, towards us good. as fast that's as she like could to give us a hug, the but momentum. the security was so like creeped out. I was like, "This girl's running pretty fast." <laughs> so they just go like, boom, close lines there. Just, oh my god! I felt so bad, and then she just like ran back the other direction as fast as she could, and we're just like, "Okay, we're gonna go find her and give her a hug." <laughs> she was also a water to? parks fan, and we found I love water parks. Yeah, but we love they, water parks. They park. attract they a say. certain. I think us and them have the fan <laughs> bases. The the, yeah, yeah, it's the it's weirdest. If, if, I think we should we tour, tour together to see how weird it, it gets. Be the weirdest thing yeah. ever. It would be insane. Yeah. And yeah. I love yeah. Austin's like wave like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's very few bands I think in this scene these days that have such dedicated fan bases. Yeah. And you guys, they're so prevalent online too. Like oh, the, the social media. Awesome. They understand yeah. social media because the moment we post a picture, it's a meme like 20 <laughs> times instantly. Yeah. And now they're getting into this thing. There's this like thing called Tyler Al distort distortion, and they literally just or oh, Remington Thick is the best. They'll oh, make his thick ass. Remington. They Huge. take every picture of me, and make my ass super <laughs> juicy. And it's almost impressive because it was funny like the first like 70 pictures, 
But now it's like in the thousands, and I'm like, oh I get it. I get it. I'm thick. I get it. <laughs> So that was actually something that I got a lot um, when I did mention I was interviewing you guys. Is like, do you keep up with the fan sites? Are you checking that out? Like, yeah. all, think of all, all of day. them. Yeah, yeah. We even I've seen everything. a few that post. Like, felt sweet. One of you guys, they post a screenshot of my tweet to you. Like, yeah. Not even a response. Just, <laughs> no. just, 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 like, just letting you know that you did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just letting me know. Like, I tweeted one. Oh, I one forgot. Of you. I forgot about that. I'm good to remember. <laughs> but yeah, they're no joke. Yeah. And last finish the sentence here, we got from OTTB Quest asking yeah. um, if you could headline any world, any venue in the world, it would be. The Palais Royale? Yeah, our dream is to play um, Palais Royale in Toronto, where our grandparents mm -hmm. met, and then the Palais Royale in, like, behind the Louvre in Paris. Uh, we would like to do a we, show there. We, it was great. We got to go to uh, the Palais Royale right after our show in Toronto. Yeah. Someone's playing drums. And we, uh, we walked in, and the manager was like, we would... You know, the last band to play here was the Rolling Stones. So we're like, okay. We told him the story and he's like, yeah, let's set something up for next year for side B release. So, yeah, so that's it's right on the waterfront. Kind of and yeah. the greatest thing is that our uh, grandparents both passed, but they they got their ashes. Why is that the greatest not, thing? I, that wasn't Why the greatest thing. Why is that thing. the greatest thing? That's not the fucking <laughs> The greatest thing, thing is our, both okay. our grandparents the passed. Ashes. That sounds horrible, Sebastian. Sebastian. <laughs> I don't think I'm didn't. appalled. It wasn't appalled. like that. that. Their ashes are right on the waterfront where the Palais Royale is. So, that would just be an yeah. amazing moment for yeah. you guys. Absolutely. Here we have to get in there. <laughs> and so I want to also talk about your music a little bit here. Boom Boom Room is the album that's out yeah. now. Yep. And technically yes. this is only side A. Yes. yes. So is there going to be more? More extensions of yes. this side B? Side B is What's planning to be released May 5th, 2018. Ooh, so it's pretty soon. Yeah, we haven't yeah. been in the studio. But We've not recorded it yet. But it's already oh, been wrong. It's been wrong. Release date yeah. for something We're, that doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> the whole idea of it was done very optimistic. before we got signed. <laughs> so we created that whole thing and it was 30 songs and we split it into two parts. Okay. So yeah, the songs are made, yeah. it's just we have to press record. Got it. And we're pretty yeah. quick. We don't need we we literally have not been off the road for longer than like a week. Yeah, it's been pretty nonstop for you guys. Four hundred yeah. shows in two years. So what made you guys, how did you decide what was going on side A, what's going on side B, and how is side B going to be was all, It was like the idea, the conception was all kind of created together. Um, uh -huh. I think we kind of look at everything as like a film or in a film sense. Like mm -hmm. We could see it play out and it, it should tell a story of not only emotions but personalities, you know, um, experiences. And I'm excited for this next one because like I think the side A we were, we were imagining what this life would be and now that we're living it and in it, I think we can go back and specifically write about the experiences that we've encountered. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's very honest now that we're coming to because I feel like we've got to this point that our whole entire career, it's been, as Emerson says, we've been dreaming about it. Now we've gone through two years of being on the road and a lot of things have happened. And you go from being a band that had a lot then to going homeless and figuring it out yourselves and then picking yourself back up and getting out there. There's a lot of life experiences that make us who we are today. You definitely dream of the road in one way. You think it's so glamorous and like, you know, like you see in the, in the in movies and TV shows, but then you start living it because I never thought like our first three tours would be in my mom's car. <laughs> and then, and then uh, you know, we're still in the van stage, which, you know, everybody has it's to charming. go through. Yeah. But it just, it honestly, I prove, we prove to ourselves every day that like, this is how badly we want it. We're willing to sleep in a van for months on end, you know, because this is our favorite thing. And I'm excited for like the next chapter of, of what's next. Life. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, at the same time that it does have its fun moments on tour, like you grow a lot. As a person. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, but I'm excited to see how the perspective is going to be different with side B and yeah. see how you guys have grown. So I'm sure it's going to yeah. be. It's definitely a lot change. crazier than side A. We, we made sure of that because whenever we hear side A, we're like, it was, it's a very calm record. Uh -huh. It's it's sonically kind of calm, but uh, after playing so many shows, you know we're a lot crazier on stage, so we're gonna bring that to the record. Yeah, you guys right. definitely have a wild live show. Yeah. Yeah. We just need to translate from Remington onto an audio form of him hanging backwards off the record. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I think I have to <laughs> record it upside down. You need to record it upside down, and then yes. it, you can get exactly. that feeling. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's never been done. You're revolutionary. <laughs> It's just gonna sound terrible. <laughs> or it's either way. Or we could be like pet sounds and just having like goats come in and just scream on the record. <laughs> oh my I mean, hey, people seem to like that these days. Right. There's right. some death metal no bands with pig squeals, so I don't know. <laughs> um, well, speaking of some musical influences, here, yes. Uh, nice segue here. Um, it does seem like you guys have your rock, your classic rock influences yeah. there. And so, as a newer band coming up now in 2017, what is 
What is it like for you guys to sort of see the difference in rock music from then to now? What is your perspective on that, on how things have changed over the years? The MacBook um, computer has come into a big prominent play of how yeah. musicians are. And I think that it kind of, what we're doing musically, it lacks any bit of life. But obviously, so. like a lot of bands, like electronic bands, you need to be It's just because it's electronic. But uh, I think like a lot of rock bands, I don't, uh, we don't, we don't like to use like uh, computers or anything like that. It's just because like I think that's the whole point of you know rock music is you're supposed to make mistakes. You're supposed to be raw. It's supposed to be oh your guitar fell out. Oh you fell down on stage. It's not supposed to be perfect. Keith Richards' solos were the most sloppy things in the whole world, and you know you don't know what if he was drunk or high that night. It was just that's how he sounded. I think so. it comes down to the intention of the artist as well. Like 60 years ago, even 30 years ago. The artists that were coming out um, wanted to leave something greater than themselves. I think today's artists just want to be famous, and a lot of uh, our generation just kind of like watched Hannah Montana and it was like, I just want to do that. And yeah. It's the instant Guilty. gratification that people are wanting. Yeah. yeah, it's you think that a like's gonna be anything of a solidifying anything in this life, but it's not. There's it's like, oh fuck off, mom! I got five thousand likes on my Instagram. Post <laughs> it's like, it's Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I, I, I could be with Fit T. I don't know, per personally, I think. Some hair gummies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> personally, I think we're looking for a bit more substance in our art. Yeah, absolutely. And um, reading a bit online about you guys, a lot of the bios say that you're classified as a fashion art rock band, yeah. which is yeah. a bit of a mouthful. Yep. There's a lot of yep. going on. With it's you like guys. a band. Have you ever seen a different one? Uh, have I seen have a different one? Have you ever seen another band like that? No. That's what I that. When yeah. we finish this tour, we're playing two festivals, and then we're gonna go home and play LA Fashion Week. Are you serious? Yeah. That yeah. Is insane. So we did LA Fashion Week last year. That's why we call ourselves Fashion Night Rock. So we can get more pinky up. The thing is, there's, there's <laughs> my dream is Victoria's Secret Fashion Show runway. Ah. Well, the thing is, is all these That's all these fashion day. designers have all these. All the rap, rappers are the new rock stars, mm -hmm. and it's you know MGK and you have Post Malone. They're doing those those events, yeah. and it's really cool that they have that going on. But there's no rock bands that are just walking up the stage and being like, "We're fucking playing what we're doing." And so it's I'm like excited. That. I'm excited to see like that this world has gravitated to us so easily, and yeah. they're like, "You're the only rock band that exists." And I'm like, "Sure, we'll go with that." <laughs> but there is also the argument that I hear quite often, not specifically yeah. about you guys, but that oh, it's all about the music. Only pay attention to the music, the fashion, the everything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So why is it so important for you guys? Because the bands that have conquered the world and the music that are still around today, even like the Stones and Guns N' Roses, they they were larger than life, they looked like rock stars, they sounded like rock stars, everything they did, and that's the problem is there's so much people just walking around and be like, I'm wearing the same band shirt for the past 20 years and you know. Yeah, I find that a lot, kind of the ignorance of a band being like, oh, we only play. Like it's all about the music, it's like, it's no. like going and getting dinner and going, I only want imagine, salad. Imagine <laughs> watching David Bowie not Fun. dressed up. You know, they wouldn't be the whole larger than life aspect Trust of that. Trust me, everybody's like obviously music comes first, 100. percent But people I aren't gonna listen to you if they if you're walking down the street. They're gonna, you look cool. Are you in a band? Okay, cool. Now I wanna. If people see a photo on Instagram, you're not listening to music on Instagram. If you scroll and you're seeing a photo now, like they look cool. Oh, they're a band. Cool. Let me listen to it. Then the music equals as much as we, the way we dress. Because we've, it makes we've a lot surprisingly of gotten like a lot of fans from the APMAs. Because we didn't even play, we were, drunk. We were just so, so drunk. <laughs> but kids have come to shows and they're like, I became a fan of you because I saw how drunk you were and I thought it was funny. <laughs> These are, we live in a generation of kids that are so ironic. Yeah. And we, we have live to, in a very sarcastic age. Yeah. I, I kind of like it. Yeah. yeah, we're a little sassy around yeah. here. We're so sassy, we're a <laughs> sassy generation. And the last thing I want to know, fashion related, out of selfish curiosity, where do you guys shop? I need to know. Uh, where, where does this well, all the, come the from? The official yeah. answer is we sleep with cougars and they give us their clothing. So now I know what I need to do. Yes, you're more than 20 more years, we're still your clothes. Perfect, great. I'll keep that in mind. And now we have a couple fan questions here to wrap this up. We have one from at the real D Web, um, wanting to know what was it like working on American Satan? I had to sing metal, and I don't sing metal at all. I don't know how to sing metal, and so I just kind of went in the booth and I had to like do a cover of like this after the burial song. Which is like a really like screamo band. Yes. And so they're just like, <laughs> and, I, and they're like, okay, sing that. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna like make a melody out of it. 
so it was it was definitely interesting like singing that type of music for the first time but I had yeah. fun yeah. yeah that's wild though that's something I didn't even know about that until somebody asked me the question I was like American singing probably. yeah no yeah. so Re Re Remington in Remington is the voice of every single song that the relentless the band that Andy Black's in with Ben Bruce and that and so Bobo not, Stewart. not a lot of bands can say <laughs> not a lot of people can say you know Andy Pierce actually lip singing to me the entire movie <laughs> Yeah, you got some bragging rights now. I do. The last fan question here from Nia's Baby Girl wants to know your favorite 21 Pilots song. Oh. I'm asking this only because the last time I saw you was APMAs where I've never seen okay. you fangirl like that in my life. Oh my life. god, I fangirled so hard. <laughs> I was super drunk and I went up to Josh Dunn and I, I, I was so close to tears. I just hugged him. He did not want it, but I hugged him <laughs> and I was like, I'm just, thank you for the music. I'm such a big fan. But uh, I've been sitting on this one for a long time. I'm not sure what my favorite 21 Pilots song is, but uh, I just think Car Radio. I think it's just such a classic. It's just, it's just so good. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go with Car Radio. I love how excited you just got at that question. I that got so excited. I love <laughs> You're so <Pilots>. giddy. <laughs> um, and you guys are on tour with Sleeping Sirens right now, if anyone yes. doesn't know. Um, what are the plans for right after this? The fans look forward to We are doing two festival shows, and then our song actually just cracked top. 25 no, on rock now. radio with Get Higher. So everyone did, the song's four years old and it's not, like radio is like, this is such a great song. I'm like, where were you guys four years ago? But I am thankful it's being played and we're getting all these cool radio shows and we're doing a few, few festivals with Incubus and Corn and Stone Sour. So and, uh, we have our first uh, overseas show in London. Well, I like Fashion Week, we had. Yeah. <laughs> And then after we're, we're gonna go disappear in Paris for a little bit, go to Florence for Tatad, and then come back and record Side B, and then tour for a month. Yeah, yeah, we're never gonna be dropped to her. Yeah. Love it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thank you for having me. It's so excited for everything that's coming up. This is awesome. Yeah. And everybody watching, make sure you check out Pele Royale if you haven't already. The Boom Room's out now. Subscribe for more interviews, and we'll catch you later. Bye. <laughs>